serve as the Health Commissioner for Columbus Public Health. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. We are here today because we're really at a critical moment during this COVID-19 pandemic and our fight against it. The virus is still here and it continues to spread in our community and across our state as well as our country. Despite our best efforts from the beginning of this crisis in March, our case numbers have continued to rise. As of this morning, here in Columbus, we have 7,682 cases, and unfortunately, we've had 332 individuals who have lost their lives. Just yesterday, we had a new single-day high for the number of new cases reported here in Columbus, with 198 cases. Our highest numbers are in cases of individuals between the ages of 20 and 39 years of age. And as we've continued to say, African Americans are disproportionately impacted by this virus. While African Americans make up about 29% of our population, they account for 32% of our cases and 35% of our hospitalizations. Overall, we've had more than 100 new cases reported per day for more than 10 consecutive days here in our community. Columbus Public Health has worked with over 7,100 residents to self-quarantine and monitor for symptoms to prevent the spread of this virus in our community. We've also significantly ramped up our testing over the last several weeks in our community. Since June 10th, the testing that we've done right here at Columbus Public Health in partnership with our three adult hospital systems, we've done over 2,800 tests. And we know that our hospital partners and our FQHCs and FQHC lookalikes outside of the testing here have done an additional 1,500 tests um, during that time frame, so in the month of June. While testing is an important part, an important tool in helping us prevent the community spread, more testing alone cannot explain why we're seeing these increasing numbers here in our community. Additionally, we know that we're testing a variety of people. Um, a few weeks ago, the governor did allow us to go to risk category five, and so now we're able to test asymptomatic individuals. So we're testing asymptomatic people, people with mild symptoms, young adults, and individuals that don't necessarily need to be hospitalized all of individuals in our community can now be tested. Because of this, because we're testing a variety of people and many who are asymptomatic, it's possible that hospitalizations remain steady. We have not seen the increase in hospitalizations, although we've seen the increase in cases. Only 11% of our cases currently require hospitalization. Um, if you factor in several months ago when we looked at our hospitalizations, almost 15% of our COVID-19 cases required hospitalization. And of those that require hospitalization, currently only 20% require the ICU. So at face value, that does sound encouraging, and in some ways it is, but it doesn't tell the whole story. It's important to remember that even people with COVID who never get sick or have mild symptoms can spread this virus to others in our community, others who are more vulnerable and more likely to have some of the complications of this virus. Community spread is real and the danger is real and we must do everything we can, everything we can to stop it. We have the power over COVID with some basic preventive measures that we can do. We cannot allow this virus to have the power over us. So it takes all of us doing whatever we can as a community to protect ourselves, to reduce the number of cases during this pandemic. And there's some simple things that we can do to help the spread of this virus. First, we should all avoid large gatherings. Large gatherings shouldn't be taking place, but we should definitely be avoiding them. We continue to see our young people tightly gathered in bars, which could explain some of the increase in cases in that population. So later today, I will be sending a letter to our food service, food service operators here in Columbus asking, requesting, that they consider reducing their bar capacity by 50% and consider reducing their hours of operation, all in an effort to help us um, reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community. 
Additionally, we also encourage people to maintain social distancing when they're out in public, making sure they're at least six feet apart, and then washing your hands with soap and water. And if you don't have access to soap and water, hand sanitizer is important. And then the last tool that we have in the toolbox is wearing a mask. And we've been saying that for weeks, how important it is to wear a mask. And in the last few weeks, we've gotten growing data that support how masks are very effective in helping us spread this virus, reducing the spread of this virus in our community. So with no vaccine available right now, there are three things that we can do. We can wear a mask, we can wash our hands, and we can avoid large crowds and make sure we, we social distance. And if we all do that together, we can be more effective at reducing the spread of this virus right here in our community, as well as across the state. So now I'd like to invite Mayor Andrew Ginther to the podium for an important announcement about COVID-19. Thank you. Good afternoon and uh, thank you, Dr. Roberts. I wanna thank Alex Fisher, CEO, President of the Columbus Partnership for joining us as well as Chris Sewell, uh, who works on so many important uh, issues facing our community, but particularly with young uh, men of color uh, with his My Brother's Keeper work. I wanna thank Dr. Roberts uh, for her continued uh, advocacy uh, guidance and advice during this global pandemic as a, as a mayor uh, to have someone of her skill, intelligence, and commitment to public health uh, guiding us through this time. I am grateful for her and her team here at CPH. Neighbors, the statistics that Dr. Roberts have laid out are grim, and we are in a dire situation, but one that we have a great deal of control over. You and I have the power to slow the spread and protect ourselves and our families. For the last several weeks, the city and many partners have invested heavily in public awareness and education about the importance of facial coverings. Our Mass Equal Kindness campaign has distributed tens of thousands of informational flyers and hundreds of store signs to area organizations and businesses to encourage residents to wear face coverings out of respect and kindness towards others. With the help of CODA, BESA, and Can't Stop Columbus, the city has been able to provide the Human Services Chamber with 40,000 masks that are being distributed through their members. We're grateful to Michael Corey and the Human Services Chamber for their work to distribute this critical community resource to those who need mass. And yet, even with this campaign, we have seen an alarming spike in the number of COVID-19 cases, especially amongst young adults. While we've dramatically increased testing that Dr. Roberts spoke of and contact tracing, which we know are other critical components until we have a vaccine available, the percentages of positive tests tell us that the actual occurrence of COVID-19 is spreading. I know masks are uncomfortable. I know especially on days like these, they're hot. And friends, I know we are fatigued from months of fighting the spread of COVID-19, but we cannot, cannot let up now. We have done so much together as a community to slow the spread and to put our neighbors health and safety first. That health and safety of our residents, our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers and grandfathers, friends, neighbors, and colleagues, 
depends on each and every one of us. Commitment to this community, the greater good, the health, well-being, and safety of our families and our neighbors. Just this morning on the way to summer camp, my daughter, who's going to have a social distancing visit with her grandpa this weekend, wanted to know whether or not she'd have to wear a mask, whether or not she'd be able to hug her grandpa, one of her favorite human beings on the face of the planet and one that spoils her rotten. So I know the challenge is real. Nine-year-olds don't like wearing masks in summer camps, especially when they're attempting to play basketball and frisbee football and all the other great activities at our summer camps. But we must stay the course and recommit ourselves to doing the things that Dr. Roberts laid out. Social distancing, avoiding large gatherings, washing our hands, and wearing masks and facial coverings. For ourselves, for our families, for our neighbors. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order that goes into effect tomorrow that requires the wearing of facial coverings when in public to slow the community spread of COVID-19. Let me be clear on what that means. In a retail establishment, by, in, in, in retail establishments, by employees and customers. In restaurants, by employees at all times and by customers when not eating. In hair salons, barber shops, nail salons, and tattoo parlors, by employees and customers. In daycares, in day camps, adults and children over the age of six. In public transportation, both employees and riders. Of course, there are exemptions for medical or behavioral condition or disability. Young people under the age of six and if you're trying to communicate with someone who is hearing impaired in a way that requires the mouth to be visible. Again, I want to stress that participation in wearing face coverings is critically important to every one of us to slow the spread of this highly infectious disease. The disease is still here. COVID-19 has not gone anywhere since March. I know we're fatigued, we're tired, we're stressed, and in some cases, overwhelmed. But this is an opportunity for this incredible community, people from all walks of life, to take personal responsibility and do their part to protect the safety and health of our neighbors. Now I'm honored to introduce Alex Fisher, the president and CEO of the Columbus Partnership, uh, to talk about the impact on business and the business community's support of this work. Alex. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Roberts. Uh, 2020 has been an incredibly tough year for all of us. Uh, made easier by your leadership. It is appreciated, it is noticed, it is celebrated. Uh, none of us uh, signed up for this, including the two of you all, and we're glad that you're both in the roles and our partner uh, this year. Uh, I remember conversations with the mayor and the governor uh, back in March, uh, and our private sector uh, joined uh, with both of them to aggressively uh, move to work from home, uh, settings where possible, uh, countless conversations over the months about coming out of those stay-at-home orders and reopening uh, Columbus and Ohio. Uh, we have a relentless desire to want to rebuild our economy and rebuild our businesses, but candidly, we can't do that. We can't make our companies healthy if, in fact, all of uh, our fellow citizens are not healthy, and if we're not healthy ourselves. And so we 100% support uh, this order, this request, this plea to wear your mask. 
You know, quite frankly, when you go to the doctor and they give you a suggestion, you follow that. You take your medicine, you follow the doctor's orders, and all of our medical professionals are telling us that wearing this mask is absolutely critical at this moment in time to stop and slow the spread of this disease. And so uh, we are proud uh, that the mayor is issuing uh, this order. Uh, we are doing it inside all of our companies and have been doing that uh, for the last month. It is now time that we even get more aggressive and Mayor, we appreciate your leadership. Uh, Dr. Roberts, this is the right thing to do uh, at the right moment in time. Uh, we would urge everybody to respect this order, to respect your neighbor, uh, to respect your families uh, and do that for the safety of yourself uh, for your neighbors uh, and your family. This is a smart thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult, uh, but candidly, um, uh, we have no option. Uh, this is the right option to make sure that uh, in Columbus and in Ohio, we continue to lead by responsibility. So, uh, Mayor, we appreciate your leadership. We stand with you. Um, and. Uh, uh, we celebrate, candidly, uh, this little simple act of putting the mask on. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask uh, Chris Sewell to come forward and share a little bit from uh, his perspective. He does incredibly important work for the city uh, in the Department of Neighborhoods. Uh, he is also, uh, you know, a member of the Armed Forces. Uh, a weekend uh, warrior that's been uh, uh, serving our country honorably uh, all over the world. Uh, but he also heads up our uh, My Brother's Keeper work, particularly uh, started during the Obama administration targeting on programming services, resources, uh, and lifting up young men of color. Chris? Thank you, Mayor Ginther. Um, like you said, my name is Chris Sewell. I am the director for My Brother's Keeper, City of Columbus Department of Neighborhoods. Um, and during this difficult time, I understand how uncomfortable it can be. Um, but I have to express to the youth, to the young adults, that COVID is real. COVID doesn't have a color. Color isn't picking a race, an age group. It's important to know that in order for us to preserve life for the long-term goal, we have to wear a mask. You know, and I understand there are real concerns for our youth. But as a community, as a city government, we have your well-being in mind. And so as we move forward, I want to, I want to say that wearing a mask can preserve family members um, are, are ones that are uh, at high risk. And so I encourage you, as the weekend comes along, to wear a mask. You know, numbers have shown the rise after holidays, you know, especially when social gatherings are taking part. Um, but I encourage my, my young adults, my youth, um, to wear a mask whenever you're out whenever you're doing regular things, social distancing, whenever you walk out the house, to wear a mask. And to the youth, you may be asymptomatic, and you may not even have the symptoms, but those wearing the mask can prevent the opportunity from spreading to others that are close to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We'd be happy to uh, take any questions. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, we're really focused on is relying on our residents uh, to take this executive order seriously. Uh, Columbus Division of Police is not going to be stopping people on the street to issue citations. Uh, and Columbus Public Health is uh, not uh, going to be going into bars. As Dr. Roberts talked earlier, she's going to recommend and encourage uh, bar owners to start limiting um, capacity and restricting, uh, uh, reducing their hours, as well as enforcing social distancing guidelines uh, in bars and, and restaurants. Uh, but I think it's important for folks to know that uh, just as we're taking this action today, and we'll ask City Council to contemplate legislat legislative action on Monday to, to reinforce this executive order, um, we have to contemplate additional action in the future if we don't slow down the spread 
and see uh, the reductions uh, that Dr. Roberts has set forth. She's got a dashboard, uh, she and her team that have put together that take a look at everything from testing, contact tracing, uh, a bunch of different uh, health and technical data and formulas that she uses that she knows a whole lot more about than I do uh, to measure our success in uh, fighting this uh, uh, you know, pandemic here locally. And so uh, she came to me earlier this week um, with some recommendations. We're taking action and uh, we'll continue to do that if uh, uh, the need arises and we don't see the slowdown we're looking for. Dr. Roberts, any additional comments? But Any other questions? Exceptions to a medical condition. Should people maybe carry documentation or a doctor's note, anything like that that they'll need to show? Um, I, I think if, if they have that, that's great. But I think, you know, I think we're all under enough pressure and stress right now that if, uh, you know, if somebody tells you they have that medical condition and that they can't wear a facial covering, we're going to take the word for it. Uh, but if, if they can get that and, and, and have that available, wonderful. Uh, this is really about, a, it isn't just about the executive order and the power of the mayor uh, or the power of council to legislate. What this really is is a call to action for the community and asking people to step up their vigilance in, in fighting uh, this virus. And we need everybody uh, to do it. We cannot enforce our way to success. We need compliance and we need people to step up and start treating COVID-19 uh, with the same uh, care and thoughtfulness as we did when the uh, uh, pandemic started. And then are you hopeful that people are going to step up um, despite what we're seeing right now without there being any enforcement of wearing masks? I am. Uh, this is uh, an incredible community. Uh, as we talked about all the things that we've done proactively leading up till now, I think requiring uh, a facial covering and mask uh, is an important next step. Raising uh, awareness, raising the profile, uh, having people know that this is, uh, you know, an order uh, that's in place and potentially uh, uh, legislative action takes place on Monday, the law of the city of Columbus until, um, you know, our public health uh, leader uh, determines otherwise. Yes, Dave. Mayor, do you believe that the rising numbers could be a result of the economy opening too soon or too fast, or is that something maybe you're looking back on? I know that was the governor's decision, but... Yeah, and we've worked very closely with the governor. As you know, that we talk with the governor, if not daily, several times a week, and, and his uh, leaders at the state, Dr. Roberts and I, were with uh, he and his team this morning talking about uh, what they're seeing, their their concerns uh, in... in um, growth in, in cases across the state and some strategies that we were contemplating, including uh, the action we're talking about today. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Roberts has a more informed response as to, you know, if there were specific things about the economy reopening. I think in, in general, what I have sensed and why this was important and why the entire community's engagement is this is a certain amount of uh, fatigue and lulling and people going from never leaving the house without a mask to all of a sudden forgetting the mask or not thinking it was as important and becoming just a little bit too lax. It was, you know, it was a similar conversation when I had my daughter this morning. The virus is still here. I know we're tired. We don't want to wear masks. We don't want to deal with these things, but it hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, and when we relax uh, our approach, when we don't practice social distancing, when we don't wear our facial coverings and masks, we put ourselves and our neighbors at risk. Doc, any? response so I, I would not attribute it to the economy opening up too soon I would really attribute it to human behavior and if that's why you know as the mayor said and as we all said it's about what we do we have control over the situation so yes you know retail is open restaurants are open but we can still go to those locations and practice social distancing and use a face covering but if you look around, if you drive around town, if you go places, you see in many parts of our community, people are not practicing the social distancing and they're not wearing masks. 
So if, if we do that, if we practice the social distancing and we wear masks, we can continue to keep our economy going and continue to have some type of normalcy to our lives. And yes, I agree, there is COVID fatigue. Um, and I, I shared this with the mayor and you know, I'll share it with all of you. If history repeats itself, the 1918 pandemic lasted two years. So this is not something that we're going to be able to quickly get over. Now, the difference between 2020 and 1918 is we have science on our side, and we're likely to get a vaccine that they might not have had and they didn't have in 1918. But this is going to be something we're going to be dealing with for a long time. And we need to be prepared, and we need to act accordingly so we can have some type of, some type of normalcy with some modifications, obviously, in our life. I know you had a message for protesters a while ago saying that maybe they should get tested if they were in a protest. Any new messages to them um, as maybe some of those protests continue? So yes, you know, we were concerned about protesters and many of them not wearing face coverings, although some were. Mm -hmm. um, and we did have a call of action to get them tested and we have not seen any trends among individuals who share with us that they attended a protest, that they then got COVID. Um, so that's good. That likely has to do with the fact that they were outdoors. And so that's promising, but it still doesn't mean that you can't get COVID if you go to a protest or if you go to an outside barbecue at your neighbor's house. So there's still precautions we all need to take um, through these activities when we're gonna be interacting with other people. Um, I, I don't believe uh, so. I think, you know, we're trying to make informed decisions based on data, uh, science, and the advice and counsel of our public health professionals. And Dr. Roberts uh, has been watching this, as she mentioned, over the last 10 days, and particularly over the last five days. Uh, and we knew it was time to act. And uh, so um, I don't necessarily regret not doing this uh, sooner. Uh, obviously, I wish there would have been greater compliance on not just face uh, coverings, but social distancing and, and washing of hands, all three of those things over the, you know, since the very beginning. Because I think everybody has sensed that there's been kind of a, uh, an exhale, a fatigue uh, in the last 30 days. Uh, and I think all of those things have contributed uh, to what we're seeing now, and that's why uh, it's so important for us to take action as soon as we see things developing, as Dr. Roberts has outlined, uh, and lay out that there may be more action that we have to take in order to protect the health and, and safety of, uh, uh, of our neighbors. Any additional uh, questions? We'll hang around for a few minutes if you have any one-on-ones. I do want to look to Robin because I think it's important for folks in the community that do not currently have masks or facial coverings. Uh, can they call 311? They can call 311, contact uh, 311 at the city, and we can connect them to those resources, whether it's through the Human Service Chamber or otherwise. Uh, uh, you know, we're not putting in place a requirement without resources. We know that there are folks out there that that need access to facial coverings and masks. Uh, they can answer questions about how you can get facial coverings and masks, how you can make them at home. I mean, we're not, they don't need to be, uh, you know, medical equipment uh, or surgical, uh, you know, things. You can use an old T-shirt uh, to make a facial covering uh, that can keep you and your, your neighbors and family safe. So wanted to make sure we got that information out there as well. Thanks, everybody.